What's going on guys, it's your boy Dak908 aka The Dig Dug himself and it's that time again we're going to be talking about some deviant monsters. This particular deviant monster is the Stun for Hermitar. Now quickly before I get any further than this, a deviant monster for those who don't understand is just a simple monster, any, any monster who's actually you know out there, who of which actually fought a group of hunters or one hunter doesn't matter and actually survived the encounter. Upon surviving the encounter, they actually evolved into take on newer and better forms. For instance, Daimo Hermitar fought a group of hunters and survived the encounter, maybe even beat them all together, and evolved himself into Stonefist Hermitar. Literally think Pokemon here, okay? Once you got that wrapped up, you'll be able to understand this a lot better. But with that being said, let's move over. Now, in order to actually fight the Stonefist Hermitar, you must first complete the HR1 quest, Shells of Steel. It's in the hub city, you sh no problem at all, HR1, one star if you will. And once you complete the quest, you'll be actually given the reward of the ability to actually purchase the special permit tickets required to actually fight the stone for Sermitar. You can actually get these from your housekeeper or your guild lady, of course. With that out of the way, now it's time to actually fight the stone for Sermitar. But before we do, let's take a couple of steps back and actually see what this guy actually has. First, right off the bat, you'll notice that he's quite large. He's, he's really big, much bigger than that of a standard Dynamo Hermitar. Uh, he's purple, purplish blue if you will, so he has a different shade to him. Not quite Plum Hermitar though. Now what sets him and Plum Hermitar apart is the fact that there's additional features about him minus just the color change. Now the first notable thing you should notice besides his actual size is one of his pincers, I believe his left one, is wildly bigger than his right one. It's actually quite armored as well. Chances are you're going to bounce off of it and he's going to use it as a shield for himself when he actually goes into contact and fights you. Another thing you'll notice is that the monoblo shell, or the monoblo skull that he's using as a shell on his back, is very, very big as well. There's no way that a monoblo that big actually died without it like starving to death because a monoblo that big ain't running from nobody. Anyway, with that being said, uh, he has quite a quite a few different moves from standard Hermitar. A lot of these return; they are the same where he will actually shield his face from ongoing attackers so that way you can't actually penetrate him but when he actually does this you cannot actually do any real damage to him you will bounce off of him unless you have a skill similar to mind's eye or you're using aerial attacks or something like that on top of that particular ability he tends to have a lot of the same attacks that the standard hermitar would have so if you had no problem fighting one you really shouldn't be too much trouble when fighting him but just remember though really talk really talk real talk now additionally to that he actually has this attack where he'll use his shell his monobos horned skull shell if you will to attack he'll lunge backwards with it and he'll jump in the air and then land or he'll do a quick spinning attack with it and then jump in the air and land it's kind of hard to actually catch both of these attacks like there's two variants too like i said Oddar, he'll just spin for you because I fought him quite a few times. I've only seen him do the, the thrust and jump up maybe twice and seen him do the spin to jump up a few more times afterwards. Granted, though, watch out for these attacks. They are wildly powerful. You need to really stand back when you actually see him winding it up. Now, for a second, let's talk about the weaknesses of the Stone Fist really quick. I mean, because we're fighting him, we need to really know what's hot and what's not. Speaking of what's hot, if you use fire when fighting the Stone Fist Hermitar, you're gonna do the, roughly the same damage no matter where you hit him, no matter what the circumstance. There's a lot of hit zones for when you actually fight this guy, do the part that he has multiple different legs, uh, those being the front, those being the back, two uh, different hit zones for both of his hands, his face, his underbelly, and the massive shell on his back. It, this is a lot of hit zones. And there's a lot of breaks on him too. Speaking of breaks, his legs are now able to break. Now, granted though, when you break the legs, they don't necessarily grant you any additional rewards in the box, but just know that they can break for additional uh, you know, damage zones and whatnot. Now, going back, like I said, to the fire. Fire, you're gonna get the same damage almost everywhere, save for the head, which tends to be, you know, the the weakness to necessarily just every monster, so you could standardly do a little bit more damage there. But what you wanna look at, though, primarily is Thunder. Thunder just has a lot better hit zones in every aspect. It doesn't necessarily have a, a hit multiplier for every little zone, minus the shell break. The shell break is where it does not actually have a zone, but everywhere else, it's it's good numbers, 15, 20 is not bad. Now, ice is another interesting one as well. You can get away with ice. If you don't want to use fire and you don't necessarily have a thunder, but you have ice, you can do that. But if you do have the ice, I would recommend you know sticking to the back of the monster, hitting him in the shell, because it has the highest damage multiplier out of all the hit zones for ice on the shell. So no thunder, 
or no fire is going to do more damage than you will be doing if you hit the shell with a nice weapon so that's that's actually pretty cool i like it i tend to come here with uh, thunder myself because i'm a lancer i like to be in the front and sometimes up underneath them as well. But whenever I'm actually using aerial weapons, something it's like aerial gun lance or aerial greatsword, I do really like using ice. With weaknesses and everything else out of the way, let's actually talk a little bit about the gear of the monster itself. So let's say you actually finally do get to defeat Stonefist Hermitar and actually collect a couple of tickets. We'll get to that real soon, trust me. You go to make the armor. Now, when you actually go to make his armor, he has two skills on it, standard, because whenever you make deviant armor, all deviant monsters that give you armor, because they all do, all deviant armor start off with two abilities. There's a third ability known as the soul skill that you will get later. You get to that third, uh, get to that third ability known as the soul skill once you level up the full armor set itself to level six. Now, in order to actually get that to level six, you must first, you know, create the armor standardly using level one tickets, which you actually get by fighting the level one version of that monster. Every time you defeat a deviant monster, you are given a new rank of that deviant monster to fight, bringing itself new challenges and uh, higher difficulty as well. For every rank that you actually defeat, you get a corresponding ticket. With the correct number of tickets and the corresponding level, you're actually able to level it up to that desired rank. You do this all the way up to level 6 to actually acquire your soul skill. Now, from the jump, you actually get Crisis and Bubble. These are two abilities that you get standard with the... Uh, stone for Sermitar. Now they work in conjunction together because with Crisis, known as Resuscitate, I believe. I don't qu don't quote me on that. I'm doing this freestyle normally. I write scripts now. I'm no scripts today. But with Crisis, if you are ailed with an ailment like a uh, ad ad either abnormal or a status, excuse me, not status, a uh, elemental blight, you actually get an increased attack bonus. So for instance, if you are poisoned, your attack goes up. If you have if you're suffering from fire blight or water blight or thunder blight etc your attack increases now bubble increases your evasion abilities and coats you in a nice little bubbly coating it actually acts as an abnormal status effect meaning when you're bubbled up your attack increases so like yo that's like really cool right it's a great ability now when you actually do get the soul skill the soul skill is called stone fist stone fist is actually a particular interesting ability not very many abilities work this way where in which the abilities that they have are twofold meaning there's abilities for blade master and there's abilities for gunners most of them tend to actually stay you know relatively passive in the abilities where it's not a particularly blade master only skill or gunner only skill but in this case it's a little bit different stone fist gives you razor sharp for the blade masters gives you razor sharp and divine blessing but if you're a gunner, it gives you recoil down two and divine blessing. So if you're a bow gunner or whatever, recoil down two, that's great. Your shots aren't all over the place. I, I don't gun, so I couldn't necessarily tell you, but that, that's a good thing it sounds like to me. But if you're a blade master, yo, razor sharp. We love that stuff, right? So there you go. Now, moving over from the armor to the actual weapons themselves. Not very, not that bad. I'm not really mad at him. He has quite a few weapons. Uh, all the weapons are actually pretty decent in my opinion. They're not wildly powerful. They're not like overly great. You normally get a standard, you know, 20-ish water. Your attack actually maxed out roughly like 190 to 200. That's not too bad. I respect 200 attack, 190 attack. And you get a plus 10 affinity bonus to practically all your weapons as well. So that's really good. I mean, there are better weapons out, out there, especially for the water. But honestly, you can't really get too mad at it when, when you have deviant weapons your hunter art gauges increase quicker so let's say for instance if you're using um let's just say bone dual blades okay i don't know exactly what they're called but let's say standard bone dual blades and let's say in order to actually get uh was it wolf's maw you need to hit the monster 10 times this is just an example here guys you hit him 10 times and you get the ability right but if you were to use a deviant dual blade and try to do the same thing you would hit it seven to eight times and you would get it you know what i mean not really those aren't the real numbers i'm just saying there's a little bonus in it for you whenever you use deviant monster weaponry so if you look at the deep the uh, stone for sermon Tars weapons you're like yeah i have a weapon that's kind of better than it but if you're really dependent on the arts if you're like a striker style kind of guy or using an art that takes a really really long time to actually load up consider the you know hermitar or the deviant weapons but with that being said everyone that's pretty much all i have for you guys for today i know the information's kind of not all that there but 
I promise you guys this, I am trying my damnness to get these out to you guys as quick as I can while giving you relevant information. Now, I could seriously sit here and like bore you with like increasingly over and done details, but I'm not really going to do that. I'm going to hit you with the basics that actually get everything you actually want and need right out of the way. But with that being said, everyone, it's been your boy Dak908, aka the Dick Dug himself. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you guys on the next one. Take care.